Welcome back Nintendo Collectors, Alex here with another video, I hope you're well guys. I'm really excited to get this video out because this is a, a an event I've been attending for the last four or five years and haven't managed to capture that much film before for my channel um, and I was lucky enough to have Ollie Alpha One do the camera work for me, uh, film me going around mucking about on all these latest arcade games which is really cool. Um, so basically guys, this is a trade fair that's been happening for the last 30, 40 years. So back in the day, you would have had all the classics like Donkey Kong and Gallagher, uh, Robotron, all being showcased at this very same trade fair for would-be operators to buy up for their arcade. Um, so it's, it's amazing to see the latest games and how much things have changed. But there's some old companies still there and there's some old faces still there. Um, last year actually I got to meet uh, the cast from Only Fools and Horses because they were showcasing um, or promoting the latest Penny Pusher and Only Fools and Horses Penny Pusher. This year I managed to meet an interview, for, and it's on this video, uh, George Gomez, who is a bit of a legend. He created um, Dissatron and Spy Hunter, do you remember those games in the arcade? Um, he's more well known now for his pinball machines. Um, so he's created Lord of the Rings, uh, Monster Bash and Transformers and they're all there and I've managed to get to meet him and chat with him and it's all on this film guys. So I hope you enjoy it. It's a great day out and um, I just want to invite you in and, and have some fun with me because we had a blast I'm telling you. There's some really cool machines in this film. Um, so I hope you enjoy it. Uh, check this out. Trade Fair. I'm here with Ollie, Alpha One. We're just going to have a little walk round and just see what's on offer this year. Anything new? Anything fresh? Anything old? <laughs> Let's have a look. Might be a few surprises. Follow me around. Obviously, loads of um, penny pushers. We're not really interested in that, though, are we? It's all rubbish. All rubbish. We're interested in the arcade stuff. I don't know if you can see down there, it's, uh, Sega have got their own stall down there. Yeah, I found some lovely girls there. Oh, oh, <laughs> some lovely girls there. VR stuff there. Look. VR stuff. There's loads of VR stuff here this year. Wow. It's the first time I've really seen it. You into the old VR though? I used to you, have an old you go on these, You go on these virtual realities and uh, the, the, the software's not that great, is it? I think that would be rubbish. There's a Tron, rubbish. There's a Tron VR game Is somewhere. Oh, I know what Oh, that's got. a bit old school. A bit of turtles. So this is the new Turtles arcade game. And who is this by? Do you know, Ollie? I think it's Raw Thrills. Raw Thrills, that's right, because John did a video on this, didn't he? It's pretty damn wow. cool. But can you so imagine this? Can you imagine this in your house? <laughs> yeah, no, it wouldn't massive. fit in my house. I'd like to try and fit it in my house. So it's I'll... pretty cool. If you like those side scrolling beat em ups. Look at that. Turtle power. Turtle power. 
So to me, from here, it looks like it's kind of honouring the, the Konami, the original Konami version. So it appears to be based on the Nickelodeon CGI cartoon rather than the more recent film. So much going on, mate. It's kind of Actually, nice to see an old school run and gun type game in an arcade. Big game though, it is huge. Redemption is a ticket machine. Namco, I don't think Nintendo really had that much to do with it, do they? Just license the game? I think it's just licensed. Yeah, yeah, just license the game. Yeah, the walking shooting really games. Oh, yeah. look at that. Hey! Hey, hey Gary! Gary. You're, you're, mate. you're on Nintendo Arcade YouTube channel, Gary. Yeah. Hey, Say hello, how are you doing? Hi, guys, how are you doing? Yeah, we're just doing little walk rounds. Oh, I didn't know you were an operator, Gary. Have you got any nuts for sale? It's a plug to get away to do that. Have you got any nuts and bolts for sale? <laughs> Are these all your machines? I wish. I wish, no. <laughs> just, just, just basically about for the day with the family as well. <laughs> around, yeah. We'll have a chat a bit. Yeah, sure, no worries. Alright, catch you later, dude. 
This is called the world's largest Pac-Man space boat. That's a big, that's a big Pac-Man, Alex. Pretty cool, huh? So it's all if you go close. Look at that. Dawn Matrix. Matrix. Yeah, all Dawn Matrix. Yeah, it's all individual LEDs. Yeah. Have we even got a motor chip? What did you say? This is cool. Now this, this looks cool. cool. I definitely want to go on this GP. Later. This kid's hogging the machine. I love you my motorbikes. You like your bikes. I would definitely have this game in my own play, which is awesome. Definitely have a go on that bit later. What else we got? Loads of VR here. Oh, Zombie land. Zombie land. Now this looks pretty fancy. Huge. Oh, 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 Do you know huge. what this reminds me of? The Galaxian Theatre. Yeah, yeah, it's like a Galaxian Theatre. Damn oh, it, I'm after that, wasn't he? I want a Galaxian Theatre. <laughs> Some VR dudes, though. Uh, let's go over here. Oh, yes. So there's a logo, isn't there, that hasn't been here for 20 years. Really excited about this the new Atari stand. Atari is back. Atari is back. What they, are they back briefly, with? Briefly, but it's back. What are they back with? What do you reckon it's going to be? Look at oh. that. Look at that. The new Atari Pong. So how have they made this game then, Alex? Well, this, this is just a prototype. Okay. Um, I think they've got plans to release this later this year. And these are them. It's pretty cool, they? yeah, it's pretty cool. Well, that's proper fancy. So is it an LCD screen? I think they're just using polystyrene or magnets. <laughs> that's all so it is. So it's all mechanical, is yeah, it? Yeah, it's all mechanical. Oh, mate, it's got the original sound. I want to buy these Atari seats. Yeah, actually, I want to buy them as well now you just Isn't mentioned that cool? them. You've got VR over here, look. Look at the VR. Yeah. Now that looks cool. So that's the first decent VR game. The other ones are a bit Is, of a it? Is that top of the range? Well, look at that. He's, they're walking. We've got to have a go on this one. Oh, it's a shooting game. So are they working in tandem or are they against Probably each other? Probably against each other. That's pretty you, cool. I know it sounds crazy, but you can imagine this kind of stuff in your home in a couple, about five years. Yeah, if they make it small enough. So look how they walk. That's pretty mad, isn't it? Right, it's pretty insane. Right, let's go over to the Sega stand. Right, Sega stand. Hello. Yeah, let me have a <laughs> I always knew you had a horse and cart, Alex. So is that? Oh, it's Redemption. I want to go, man. I want to go. Welcome we go. to Derby Champion. Here we go. How do I play? Oh, I ride the horse. <laughs> oh, look at Alex riding that horse. You can tell he's ridden before. Look at that technique. Look at look at how he's putting his back into it. That's impressive. <laughs> oh, this is. So, have you ridden a horse before? Because you're very good at this. <laughs> Do you reckon everyone's known we've had a few beers before we filmed this? <laughs> Yeah, I've got a jump coming up. A jump? Yeah. Oh! I think, I think your horse is like slowing down. Oh, it's a work. Have I done it? This is brilliant. You have to lean the thing to go left and right. You actually have to, yeah, you do, look. That's why you're doing that. Oh, my God. Alright, this 
go around here? Let's go. Yeah, let's go this way. So what's mad to think, Alex, is like 15, 20 years ago, this would have all been so all the yeah. defenders. Yeah, so this is a trade fair that's been happening for 30, 40 years. Yeah. Back here, Nintendo, Sega, yep. all of them would have been here showcasing the latest games. You would have Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong Popeyes. here, Galaga, Galaxian, yep. so all would have been here. Now, obviously, things have changed. You've got this is all the modern games. Yeah. Um, let's, let's go over to Sega. I, I haven't actually been to the Sega stand yet. Sega doing their thing. It is, it's a new one. Apparently it's just had a software update as well. Oh, what's this? So what? 3D Extreme Flight 2. Wow, so it's analog control. Who's who, 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 this by? Oh, okay. Very fancy. I think it might be full motion, Alex. Yes, it is. It's full motion. There's the stop button. So, is this a new product? Uh, yeah. Yeah? Yes. And when's it going to be available on the market? Available to order now? Yes. Okay, cool. So how much is this going to cost? Uh, $6,900. $6,900. So just over 5 k Alex. I like the motion. It's a cross between Afterburner and like... Push forward. Galaxy Force, right? Oh, this is cool. Even the rotors move. Look at that. Let's try and get some footage. So is it a bit after Bernie? Oh, it's on. That's a bit like F Zero. It's on rails. Oh, this looks great. So, you, oh blimey, <laughs> it just hit me. So this has got. Oh, I don't know, man. You've got throttle and control. It's not much fire. Oh, look, it's got speed as well. Oh, so it's a bit like Stun Runner as well. Look at that. I've got to be careful this thing doesn't hit me as he spins it. So it looks pretty intense, Alex. Yeah, it's, it's alright. It's, uh, it's an on rail shooter, basically. Um, It's going up. It's gonna. It's gonna hit the top. No, it doesn't. It's not gonna hit it, is it? Not gonna hit it. Okay. Hey, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> now he's trying. Uh oh. It's weird. So what makes it go all the way up to the top? Uh, does it do? It does that in the game or uh, at the end? The one okay. So Where six. Six thousand nine hundred dollars. I'd buy that for a dime. <laughs> buy that for a dollar. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you. much. <laughs> oh, this is a new Sega game. Do you know, it looks pretty damn cool though. Look at the size of the Look actual cabinet. That. So this reminds me of the virtual racing. Oh, they go yeah. backwards and forwards. Dude, that is awesome. That is absolutely awesome. That is this very cool. This reminds me of Virtual Racing, man. Who's this by? Sega. It's Sega. Sega, right. It's got that like 60 inch screens. But what makes this game, though, is the actual cabinet, isn't it? The actual race car that you sit in. It's like the deluxe Virtual Racing yeah. that came out. It's awesome. That is awesome. The old big man's getting in the old race craft. 
the size of that machine, absolutely incredible. You're a bit big for an F1 driver, mate. Yeah, I know. That is the most impressive right arcade controller I've ever seen. Really? So, man, this is awesome looking. Alex, this is awesome looking, man. So is it... So are these being sold into the arcade? Are these actually getting sold into arcades, arcades FECs, uh, anywhere that might want to do them, so... Wow. And what's the cost of this machine? This is 13,000. Yeah. Dollars or pounds? Pounds. It's anywhere 12,010. 12,010,000. 12, okay, brilliant. Oh, your your head was off to the side, mate. That looked awesome, though. I want to have a go. <laughs> looks good, doesn't it? They're ten grand. Those Tron eggs is 10 grand. Right, so you, you're all set up, Alex, are you? Yeah, I'm ready to go. So he's showing you what he's doing in the background, but that is, that is pretty cool. So this is £13,000, so for any US listeners, that'll be around fifteen and a half, maybe $16,000. I'd imagine there might even be a plus fat on that as well. I don't know, I didn't ask. Look at, he's right in it. Look at that. So let's have a look and see what he's actually doing. Oh wow, this... So that, when he landed, the bike just shook. So it's giving you some kind of actual kind of landscape experiences. It's kind of interacting with you. So as you're doing things, the bike is giving you feedback. You just hit a laser. How's it actually feeling? I mean, when you did that jump, really impressive it's cool. and how you're in how you're interacting with a bike it's like it's telling you that you're there where some VR experiences won't do that look at that bike let's see when he does the jump the jumps coming up hopefully is the jump coming up no I wanted to show you the bike doing its thing, but I think... Oh, so... <laughs> you feel sick? You feel sick. That's VR, like that. VR does do that. I've been on many bikes in my life, but that is... Uh... All right, are you going to have a go? I wouldn't mind a go, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, Alex, on to the next game. 
Target. Bravo. Let's have a quick look at this. Alex is just... Looks like a confidential mission sequel or something. We've got uh, Luigi's Mansion. Oh, so you, you looked at this last time, didn't you? Let's go Island as well. Let's go Island. I don't know, another shooting game. Not my thing, but this is all right. Let me come around the other side. Hold on. Oh, there's people in there. You can't see. Oh, you can kind of see. You've actually got vacuum cleaners that you actually pick up. Oh really? Yeah. Go on, let's have a yeah. quick peek. So have you actually played this game? I have game? played it. I didn't think that much of it to be honest. So is it, yeah. can you get it on a console or is it totally no, different? totally just the arcade. Uh, Storm, Storm Racing, Racing. Deluxe. Who else is Oh, there's Rog. Say hello Rog. Oh. Got, uh, what's that one over there? Oh, this is Mario and Sonic at the Rio Olympics. That's a big joystick you got there, Alex. I like them big. Hey? I, I like them big. It's big and red. <laughs> That's where you do your deals. That's where Sega sell all their games, look. So you go in here. This is where the money happens. Let's walk through it. All the deals. All the deals. Get Sega coffee, look. Hey? Oh, oh, there's the Daytonas, look. So apparently they've updated the code. Right. And it's so it's the same, exactly the same game? As last year. Right. But it's got no bugs now and it works. Right, it's pretty cool. Always a good seller in I the think, arcade. Yeah, I think they rushed it a bit. What I wanted to show you guys was the... Um, the, the Nintendo cruising blast. Oh Should yes. we go and find that? Yeah, is it Top here? Of, yeah, it's here. Alright. Me and Roger. Alright, I'll follow you. This place is absolutely massive. It's got to be 80,000 square foot. Oh, is it in, oh yes, next. So it's next to the Injustice Arcade. I'm just going to jump in this cab now and just show the game. All right. Really, really good game. Okay. Cruising blast. Just film it. This is awesome. I love this game. I'm going to go for the red Ferrari. Okay. Have you played this before? Huh? Played it. Yeah, I played it a couple of times before. I think it's absolutely brilliant. It's how an arcade game should be, just loads of fun. Like the, the feedback on the steering wheel was brilliant, absolutely yeah. fantastic. And you got the blast here, I think you get that three times. Oh, a tornado. tornado. Yeah, a tornado. It looks amazing, it feels amazing. Oh, the cabinet's great. Yeah. It's got a premium feel to it, there's quite yeah. a lot of cheap games out now. I've got my foot down on the pedal and I haven't had to take it off yet. But it's, that, it's got, that, it's got that, that more authentic kind of arcadey racer, isn't it? Yeah. Checkpoint. Checkpoint. Yeah, that typical cruising USA end. The speakers, man, are incredible. I've got no more blasts. Come on. Yeah. 
Killer Instinct and uh, the original Cruising USA were like Ultra 64 powers, yes. weren't they? It's off the range back then. Yeah, prior to the N64 getting its release. So, I think that's about it, isn't it? We've seen everything, haven't we? There's, yeah, there's, there's some pinballs, but... Pinballs? Can, uh, can we go and have a quick... We can have a quick look. Have a have quick have a quick glitches. Through these all in back there, dogs and galaxy. Are these all new pins? Well, there's George Gomez over there. George Gomez? Yeah, he's the creator of Midway Go. Or well, the guy in the blue t shirt. Yeah, yeah. Right. So that guy in the white blue shirt created Tron, Spy Hunter. Worked on Dissatron. And Dissatron Environmental Cab. Bit, get an interview. bit of a legend back in the day. Let's follow Alex. How you doing guys? Yeah. Hello. You're a legend. You're a Nintendo Arcade. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know if I'm a legend, you know. You if I'm a legend, that four dollars will buy you a Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> You're the creator of this to Tron, right? Yeah. Yeah. So how did you come about that? That's an I was a young man. I was just young man. I was only trying to do stuff that I thought was cool. Right. Man, that, that cabinet. Such a great, great game. Yeah. Well sort Genius off the cabinet game. amongst collectors. <laughs> We're big into the old arcade scene. Yeah, well, see, see, we were, I was coming off Tron, and they they gave me a lot of freedom, so, you know, I got a little crazy with the cabinet. Yeah, that is an <laughs> awesome cabinet. As soon as you sit in that cabinet, it's like... Yeah, it was fun. Immersive. That's so what it was cool. supposed to be. Yeah. Right? Everybody was talking about, back then, everybody was talking about that immersive experience. Yeah. So, and the know. Spy Hunter, did you do the cocktail yeah. as well? Wow, yeah. it's incredible. Yeah, those were fun games. Yeah. Those were fun games. So what side of the game did you actually design? Did, was it well, the actual, so, just the, the actual cabinet or the actual game as well? Well, so, um, you know, the teams were very small back then. Yeah. And so everyone on the team contributed to everything in the game. Yeah. So a lot of the, in Spy Hunter, the concept of, you know, the car having music when you had weapons, all yeah. that stuff came from me. Right. I created the, the endless road. I, I you know I wanted yeah. I wanted that sensation like in a Bond movie yeah. when you know the, the like all the bad guys show up yeah. and the music amps up yeah. and now he's got to deal with it. That was a the hard game it. though. That's so, yeah, it was a very hard. Game. Yeah. Did it sell well though back in the day? It did. It was it a big hit. It was a big hit. And Dissatron. Yeah, Dissatron was a smaller hit because we were coming off. Of yeah. It was a different time. I, I, prefer, prefer, I prefer discs to Tron. Oh, I prefer discs to Tron, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Well, discs to Tron, that, the concept of doing the, the disc battle on yeah. the rings yeah. was actually invented when we invented Tron. Right. But we didn't have the hardware to research put it into to the put game. it into the game. Right, I see. So it became the sequel. The spin off. Okay. A very smart guy named Bob Dinnerman was the programmer on the right. game. And Bob. Um, yeah. Bob basically, uh, you know, Bob was very, very keen on 3D and way ahead of his time. Right. And he was pushing very hard yeah. for us to make that as 3D yeah. as possible. As a matter of fact, we tried to fake the math that re that that dealt with the reflections of the disc in the room. Yes. And we couldn't make it work, so he had to make it real. Right. So all of that math, all the reflections of the disc and all that stuff, that's all real. Oh, it's incredible. Yeah. Incredible so experience. for the time, it was definitely... It was good, know. yeah. And on... on, on um, on Spy Hunter, my partner Tom Leon and I were both, you know, we're both Cuban and we were sort of came over as refugees and we were sort of children of the Cold War. We were right. way into the whole spy thing. Right, okay. You know, so we were like, you know, what do we, what we do? Already. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah. So, I mean, that's just a little bit of it. Do you have, do you have one of those machines at home in your own? Uh, I, don't have a, I don't have either of those machines. No. I really would like You'd to have like one. one. I don't have the space. I no. I do have eight pinball machines in my living room. Yeah, because you do pinball machines as yeah, well. Yeah. So what was the pinball machines you created? Because I'm not so much into the pins. I'm more of a yeah, big guy. Well, I've done my a lot of them. Here's a pinball. I've done a lot of them. You've done a lot. Yeah, yeah, Monster I, Bash was it? Monster Bash was yes. one. That Batman that's right over there right, on, wow. on the wall is, is yeah. one. 
Yeah, I've done a lot of them. I did Lord of the Rings. Yeah, I Lord of the Rings is a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Transformers as well. Yeah, Transformers, Transformers Avengers. Yeah. Uh, and how I do mean, you think the industry's yeah. changed since, I mean, you've been around a long time, so the industry it's changed, changed a lot. Yeah, the yeah. industry has changed. For the yeah, better? When I started working, the consoles were inferior to the to the yes, arcades. Yes, now they've and, taken over. And now it's, it's sort of flipped, and so... You know, I mean, the consoles have a lot of power. Yes. And the gaming experience is a lot different. I I came up in a time when, you know, a coin-operated game is about three minutes of entertainment, and yeah. then I've got to get your quarter again. Yes. Yeah, right? it's all about making money. And so money. it's like, I always have to, we all, we were always worried about, I, I, want, I want you to feel like when you when you drained or when you, when you crashed, it's your fault. Yes. And you think you can do better. Yes. And I got to get you to coin up again. Yes. I mean, my that mentality. whole risk reward element. Absolutely. Yeah. My mentality going up. What I was trained to do was, you know, let's get, you know, I got to keep you putting money in the game. Yeah. So the console experience is very different. Yeah. The console experience is a lot like, you know, reading a book or developing a story. Or yeah. The evolution but the old stuff's all coming back now. Yeah, a lot of the is. retro stuff's yeah, coming back. Have you seen the Atari Pong at the end? It's there? a lot of fun, you know. Yeah. I mean, that's you know what that those games. I mean, if you look at games from that era, in the in the in the early '80s, late '70s, early '80s, when we were creating those games, every game that came out from all the key factories, from Atari, from Midway, Nintendo, every game was yeah. a new game. Yes, it was innovative. Yeah. right? it wasn't. Yeah. You, you didn't have this like. I mean, today it's like we're we're down to like six categories. You yes. know, you're a shooter, you're a driver, you're an MMO. You know, it's like you you know you 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 are in you fall in these categories, and and, and we're we're not we're not focused enough on gameplay. We're focused a lot on presentation. Yes. So today's today's video games, it's all about you know how how close to cinematic can I make the experience? Yeah. It's different. It's got but, to be different from the home experience. But you really got to focus yeah. on. You really have to focus on. I mean, today we really need to focus. We need to go back to basics and focus on what mechanic of play is going to be fun. Yes. What's really going to leave you wanting to make the damn thing fun? Definitely. Right. I mean, it's like, like want to go back, play it again. It's a lot of fun. It's. I mean, the story, all the story elements, as much. And I, I'll tell you what. I don't. I don't like to play online with the ten-year-olds. No. So I, I I play story modes a lot. Yes. Right. When I when I fire my Xbox, I'm all about tell me a story. Yeah. I'm going to play through it and stuff. But it's I, I want developers to focus more on the, the mechanic of play being fun. Yes. And less on the the cinematic Sim- elements. Simulation as well. Yeah, making the, it I mean, more too realistic. Are, it's like we it's it's a it's a production bar that we've become used to. Yeah. But the reality is that. You know, go back to a Tron, go back to a Spy Hunter. We didn't have, we didn't have the resources, so we had no option yeah. but to try to make the thing that you were doing out of what you, out right. what, out what you had yeah. at the time, which That's was it. quite limited hardware Absolutely. at the time. Yeah. But Absolutely. still, they're classics. And for me, they're great to go back to. George, thank you so much for sure. chatting. Thanks, it's guys. Been awesome to meet you. Cheers. Thank you. You are awesome, dude. Catch <laughs> you later. See ya. That was awesome. Can't believe I got to meet that guy. George Gomez. George Gomez. Yeah. Right. Well, that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. That's it for EAG London 2018. See you on the next one. Well, there you have it, guys. EAG 2018. Some really cool arcade games. I guess my favourite has to be Cruising Blast, or even though that has been around a couple of years now, it is a good game. So if you see it out there, stick a coin in it, guys. It is a lot of fun. It really is. And it's good to see that kind of Nintendo logo on the back, even though they probably didn't have much to do with the game. It's just a license from them. Um, Atari, good to see them back, even though it's a new company. It's not the old Atari of old, but I could see that Pong being a success maybe in a bar or something like that. It's quite cool. Uh, and Pong actually is a really good game. You forget how good and addictive that game is. And when you've got it in a machine like that, with all the LEDs, it's very inviting. I think they do well in a bar, that game. Um, Sega had a good stand. Um, that uh, Tron Light Cycle VR thing, I don't know. Uh, with a lot of VR, it just makes me feel sick, to be honest with you. I don't think they've nailed it just yet. I think it's still going to take a few more years to get the VR right. And the software never seems to be that good. But the bike was cool. I'll take the bike home with me any day of the week. But yeah, some really cool stuff. I really enjoyed it. It was a great day out. I've got to say thanks to Tony Temple for buying me the beers. 
Uh, good to see Roger there, Gary there, and Kyle, a new face on the block. Good to see you there, mate. I've got to say thank you to Ollie as well for doing all the film work. And a big thank you to Rich as well, who does all the music for the channel. So guys, if you're interested in any of the music that's uh, in any of my videos, all you've got to do is go and buy Rich's album, which is Zero Hour. It's absolutely awesome. I, I've actually got it in cassette in my van, and I'll play it at least three times a week. It's that good. It's really, really cool music. Um, so if you want to buy any of that, guys, just the link's in the video below. Make sure you, you pick it up. It's good stuff. Anyway, I'll see you on the next one, guys. Thanks for watching. See you later.